Hey, what's going on? It's Caleb. In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to implement pagination with Fast API. So be sure to check out the previous videos in this series. The last one was actually about the concepts of pagination. There's a couple of different approaches. We're going to talk about them in this lesson and show you how to actually do them, but that'll give you more background so you know what we're doing in this lesson. So I'll have the link to the playlist down below as well as the notes for this lesson, which will have the link to the repo and code samples, all of that. So I'll have a link for both of those down below. So I'm building on this Fast API pagination branch if you want to see the changes to the files. Now the very first thing we built out this API in a previous lesson where I introduced Fast API and all of the different things you could do and we created this campaigns endpoint which lists out a bunch of campaigns. What exactly is a campaign? Well, my intention was like a marketing campaign. So it's going to have a name and then some due date when that campaign ends. The full campaign data structure is this right here with a campaign ID, a name, a due date, and a created at. So let's take a look at what our current API structure is. We'll say fast API dev main.py. And then we will open up our web page. It will look something like this. And then we can go to API slash v1 slash campaigns. And then if we pretty print, it's going to look something like this. So it's just an outer object with a data attribute that contains an array of these custom campaign objects. So the first approach to creating pagination would be to pass a URL parameter page and then set this equal to some value such as two. And then the server will interpret that and do something special with it. Now, currently it's not doing anything, but that's what we're going to talk about how to implement. So let's talk about first how we can take this value and access it on the back end. So this is going to be an additional parameter in our endpoint. So we'll find our campaigns here in our read campaigns function. We can have an additional parameter, which will be the page. This is going to be an integer and we will give this a default value from query, which is something you can import from fast API import query. And this is how you can get the parameter values from the URL. So we're going to use two arguments here. The first will be what value we want it to be by default. And then the second thing here will be any validation. So for example, you can say GE for greater than or equal to one. So it's not gonna take a negative value, for example. And let's just check here, we can print the page. We'll scroll down here in our terminal. Let's go back to our page. We will do a refresh check the terminal and you'll see the value two printed. So that's exactly what we passed in the URL. So we can tell that that value is being retrieved. Great. Now to go through pages, we basically need to limit the amount of data that is returned and use an offset so that when we go to a page other than the first page, we get the data after that offset. So the first thing you will want to do is you will want to have some ordering. This will make sure that we have predictability in the ordering in which the data is returned so that the pages have some logical meaning. Now this could be sorted by any attribute. If you don't have a good one, then you can just use ID. But if you have something such as a date, you could use that as well. So let's start with just the ID. So we'll say campaign dot campaign ID. That's the name of the ID attribute we created. Then after we order, we can do an offset. And now basically what we can do is we can use the page as a way to calculate the offset. This will assume a certain page size. So you can take that as a parameter as well, or you could just hard code something here. Let's start with just hard coding something. So the formula for this, let's actually do this in a separate calculation just to make it easy. Offset is the page and it'll be minus one. So I'm gonna put this in parentheses and then we'll multiply this by the number of elements per page. Let's just say 20. So that's the offset we will use. And then for the limit, that's the other value we're going to need. That's going to be the number of elements we want returned, which we could use as part of that offset calculation. And then we'll just add that into this query here as well. So dot limit, passing in the limit. Now this problem here, I think this is just a PyLance typing thing, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm going to say Type is ignore. So I just went in and added a bunch of extra data. So you can do that from the docs page. So just going to slash docs, go in here and post some data. But the way it works now is when we are looking at 
our API, if we specify no page, it's going to default to giving us just 20 elements. You can pretty print that to see it a little bit better. It goes from ID 1 up to 20. If we go up here and say page is 2, it will continue starting at campaign ID 21 all the way up to 40. So it seems to be working. What we could do is we can build upon this. So the other thing we could do is we could allow the page size to be passed in. Page underscore size. This will be query. We will default this to 20 and greater than or equal to one. And then limit is going to be page size. So structurally, this is going to be pretty much the same thing, but now we can add in here page size, set that equal to something like five. All right, let's check the error here. Let's go in here and type this to an int. All right, let's go try that again. Let's do a refresh. There we go. So now we're getting five elements. Now what we could do is we could actually adjust the response structure so that it will actually calculate the next and the previous URL. So we could just access that from the API response very easily. So here's how we would do something like this. We start with a base URL and you can get this from request.url, removing with split anything coming after the question mark. This request we will need to define in the list here. So this will come from request imported from FastAPI. Let's start with that so we can see that base URL. We'll just do a refresh, check the terminal, and you'll see it in an array here. So we can just grab the index zero element, and that should give us the base URL. Then we can just append new stuff to it to give the next and previous. So we'll remove this print and we'll start crafting the next URL. Let's do an F string to make this as easy as possible. We'll put in the base URL and then we will create the page, set that equal to something and the page size equal to something. Page is really easy. We'll just say page plus one page size. That's just going to be the limit here. We're actually kind of creating this limit variable unneedingly because it's just an alias for page size, but that's okay. And I'm going to call this next URL, and then we'll do a similar thing for the previous URL. Previous URL. Let's copy this, paste, and we'll do page minus one. However, we're going to want to conditionally do this because if we're at the last page or the very first page, we don't necessarily want to have both the next and the previous URLs. So let's just create two conditions. If, and then we'll just check to see if it makes sense for us to have a next page, which we can get with the offset, how far we are into the data set, plus the limit being less than the total count of elements, which we'll have to calculate also. <laughs> a bunch of little things here. Total is session.exec, select campaign, and then we can do on the outside a dot count. Yeah, so there's actually not a, a count attribute. What we can do is we can follow this guide here using this func dot count function. So I think that will look something like this. We'll replace the session dot exec with select func dot count. And then func will come from SQL model or SQL alchemy if you're using SQL alchemy directly. And then on the outside of the select we will say dot select from campaign and then on the outside dot one so that should get our total number of elements if it's less than the total then we will have a next url otherwise next url will be none and then we'll do another condition for the previous url which this one's easy if you're on page two then you will have a previous URL. Otherwise, previous URL will be none. And then we can adjust this return structure. We can build a custom type for it to match. So we can look into that in a second if needed. But let's start by first just adding in additional attributes into this return structure. So we'll spread this out a little bit, come in here and say next is next URL. 
and prev or prev is the previous zero. And since we have it, we might as well have the number of elements as well. So we'll say count is total. And when we do a refresh, I'm not seeing that structure. So what I'm going to first do is just go in and match the type here. So I'm going to create a custom response, paginated response, base model, generic T, and then we will have all four of these attributes. So data is of type T, and then next will be a string, which is optional. We don't always have a value there. So to do that here with pedantic models, we'll say optional, and that is a type with a capital O, generic passing in what the potential type could be, which is a string. This will be imported from typing import optional, and then prev is optional stir, same thing. And then the count is just an integer. A uh, small typo here, this should be base model. Then for the response type, we're going to change this to paginated response. Save, let's go do a refresh, and there we go. It adds in here, next, previous, and the count. Then you can take this and use that to navigate. So here's how you would go to the previous page. Same idea for next, you can take the next URL and use that for navigation as well. So that's just a handy way to allow the client to navigate. So what we have works, and I don't want to say it's bad, but there are some potential concerns that you might want to do additional research on. So one of the big ones here is the total. If you have to go and calculate the total and it's just counting all the rows and it's not an optimized query, you're basically touching all of the data, which for one defeats the point of pagination and two could be a really slow query that slows down your API. So there may be better ways of doing this, for example, I think depending on the database system, they may have a way to retrieve row count in an optimized way. Either they keep that metadata stored somewhere, or you can use estimations. Another option would be to not use the total at all. And in that situation, basically the next URL is something that may lead to an empty page, but that's probably not the end of the world. So for example, we would comment out all of this and we would just have the next URL like so. We would exclude the count altogether. We would need to adjust the uh, data structure as well. So we'll comment that out. And when we visit the page now, we could basically keep navigating to this next URL and it's regularly going to increase the page to four, to five, to six. So let's just keep going till we get out of data. I think we have 66 elements. So something like, I don't know, 12, page 12. So this here gives us one, two, three, four, five. Let's go to page 13. This gives us one, two, three, four, five. Let's go to page 14. This gives us just one element, but it still gives us a next URL. Now in this situation, we could easily say that there's no next because the data returned is only one element and we have a page size of five. So you could easily identify that. But the problem is if it returned exactly five, we wouldn't know if there's a next page. But if you took this page and you navigated to it, it's not going to break anything. It's just going to return no data. So that's an alternative approach. There's all kinds of different approaches of solving this problem. So you can research how some of the popular APIs do this. For example, you could build off of this idea and retrieve an additional element from the database. And if that count is larger than the limit, then there would be a next page. And you could use that to conditionally display the next attribute from the backend without having to calculate the count. So I'm going to go back in the code and I'm going to remove these comments. This is basically going to be the approach I choose for pagination. To summarize, having this next URL, but it's not a smart pointer knowing the context, it's just going to create that URL. And then it's up to the consumer of this API to use that URL to see if there is more data. So that's probably the simplest solution to not creating a count. But again, there could be improvements upon that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to commit the changes as is, and then we're going to go through this again with an alternative approach, very similar to this, but we'll use a limit and an offset directly from the user instead of a 
page and a page size. So basic pagination, no count of elements. So if we want the user to be able to provide the offset and the limit directly, we will change these URL parameters to be the offset for the page, and then the page size will be the limit. And I've just been using these as aliases and then a small calculation for the offset. I'll just remove both of those lines. Now for the offset, this is basically how many elements to skip. We don't want to start with one, so I'm going to change that to zero and it needs to be greater than or equal to zero. But we will default the limit to 20, I think that's fine, and we'll keep that as a minimum of one. Now let's take a look at the next URL. We will just take the offset that they gave us and then add to it the limit to generate the next offset for the following page. Now this will be assigned to offset and then the limit will be assigned to limit. So we'll test this out in a moment, but I need to fix the previous URL. So let's first update these values so I don't forget. Offset and limit. Now the thing with the offset is, let's say we had an offset of five. This would retrieve data six and onward. If we wanted to go to the previous page, which would be basically jumping back the limit of 20, that would bring us into negative numbers. So we definitely don't want to do that. So what we'll do is we'll do a comparison. We'll get whichever is larger of zero or the offset that we have minus the limit. So I'll write that out so you can see it. Max of zero or offset minus limit. So if our offset is five and we subtract 20 to go to a previous page, that's going to be negative. So we'll just default them to going to an offset of zero. However, if offsets say 40 and then we subtract 20, that makes sense. So we'll go with that value. And we will do this logic as long as the offset is greater than zero. So let's run this and check these out. Let's just go to the main list of campaigns and we will see the previous is null, which is great. And the next will have an offset of 20 and a limit of 20. That looks good so far. Let's see if that'll actually retrieve the right data. Starts at ID 21 as we would want. Let's check the next. Starts at offset of 40, which should give us ID 41 onwards. And a limit of 20. So that URL looks good. And this previous URL looks good as well. Let's just try it though. Since it has a manual offset of zero, let's just confirm that works. And it does get us campaign ID one. Cool, that's perfect. The only other thing I wanted to test is if we had, say, an offset of five, this will start with ID six, go all the way up to 25, and the previous should have campaign offset of zero. So that's what that max logic is doing for us, making sure that this doesn't go negative. So that's a basic overview of pagination within FastAPI. The concepts of pagination will go over to other programming languages and libraries as well. The other major type of pagination is going to use cursor-based pagination. That's what we're going to talk about in a dedicated lesson. So definitely check out the playlist so you can get all of these lessons. And again, I'll have this repo and any notes in the description as well. The last thing I'm going to do is just commit and say offset and limit pagination and I will push those changes. So now you can see all of those different variations. You can follow along, you can go by page, or you can go with the offset and limit. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please be sure to subscribe, and I will see you in the next lesson. Peace out.